Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Friday Mailbag episode. I'm here with your host, Doug Langford. My name is Caleb Forbes. Uh, today, we've got a really interesting set of questions going on, Doug. Um, so I did a thing. I, Wait, w- hold on. We didn't talk about this we didn't talk in our about pre-production this. meeting. I don't know about you doing <laughs> things. You have not told me about things. What did you do? I did a thing. No, um, oh boy. you know, it's a lot of things I see in different um, different social circles, different social media posts, um, tips and tricks and, and things to do. Uh, and we do this already. We share this content to our circle, to our friends on Facebook, to people we know. Um, I kind of did the same thing. Uh, I, I had a group of friends that I know that listen to podcasts or, you know, they're interested in the stuff that we do or they're just very interested in industry info. And uh, sent them the link, sent them on podcast, YouTube, Apple, said, look, wherever you're listening, whatever your your platform of choice is, take a few minutes and listen to one of these episodes. If you've got the time, listen to a couple episodes, um, get a feel for it. And I was like, I want to hear your questions. I'm not going to lead you in on the questions that I want want to ask. I just want you to come up and form really good, solid questions that I can answer, uh, answer oh, live. Okay. And uh, to my surprise, and I really didn't think anyone would listen. I think, oh, yeah, sure, I'll listen. Uh, but to my surprise, we actually got some really, really good questions out of this. Uh, so much so that I want to talk about it on a Friday mailbag episode. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Yeah, let's let's, let's jump in on this. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? <laughs> This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt Dirt to to dust. Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. All right, all right. Yes, it is Friday mailbag time with a little twist today where Caleb went out and got some questions that I have no freaking clue what they are. So I, have no clue. I have no idea what I have no idea where this is gonna go. So um I am finding out with uh with everybody else. So yeah, why not? So um, let's not keep the people waiting. Caleb, hit me with the questions. I'm going to hit you with my best shot. <laughs> give, give it to me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this one is, uh, from my buddy, Jason, Jason Beeb. Um, he's got a very unique situation. So, yeah, he wrote, I've recently been paralyzed from the waist down in a car accident. Thankfully not in the Jeep. And while I have made some recovery, it's still extremely difficult for me to get into my rig. I've seen some air suspension options and was looking at the AccuAir suspension setup that I saw on YouTube. Do you have any insight on this setup? I'd love to keep my 40s and not have to size down. Uh, and then also ask, it's a secondary question of that, how would that affect driveline angle and drive shaft? Do I need to have a custom drive shaft made if I go this route? Okay. All right. So I actually recently got a lot more in-depth knowledge on this question at KOH. We we found ourselves want needing and want well, we just wanted a better pit spot. We needed a better pit spot. It was part of the strategy. And AccuAir uh had their trailer set up right there on main pit road, uh, right next to Nitto. Mm-hmm. So I approached him and I said, Hey guys, you know, what would it take to get in the spot? And he goes, Well, you'd have to, you know, you gotta run a sticker. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> that was that was kind of that deal. But as part of that, you know, I know a lot of the guys that work at AccuAir. Um, some of them are actually decent dudes. I'm not going to say which ones are the decent dudes, which ones are the ones that we like to throat punch each other. <laughs> um, but we just got into conversations about that mm-hmm. and about the AccuAir thing. And I've been learning more about it because a friend of mine actually started working for AccuAir and started pushing that brand and selling that brand. Um, and, and he's a good dude. And I know that it wouldn't be, a, he wouldn't work there for a good company. So it kind of treat kind of, kind of intrigued me and piqued my interest about um air ride things mm-hmm. so yeah there is an, an AccuAir is one of them because i'll and i'll stay with that here because he mentioned it yeah so you can literally get these airbags that are in place of your springs now like that's a thing you can that is a thing that you can do um super super freaking cool i think um 
and and looking at some of the specs and learning about how they make the bags and the thickness of the material and all these it's it's pretty freaking stout stuff like they are uber uber confident in their product to the point where they were like bro you can put it on a race car like we we would back that 100% That'd be interesting. That's big. I'm like, <clears throat> no. I thought he was kidding. He's like, he's like, no, I'm dead serious, man. I'm like, that's it's not a problem. It's no issue. And here's why. And he runs down all the things. So is it is it new is it needed by the average person to be able to want to, you know, go up or down four or five inches? No, probably not. This is a unique situation this is where very- I could see this being a very, very helpful thing to have where when you stop the vehicle, when you park the vehicle, you can drop it down to its lowest setting, make entry and exit much easier. And people think that, Oh, four or five inches isn't that big of a deal. I'm here to tell you it's huge. huge. It's absolutely massive. When you start talking about lift heights that we, the amount of lift that we can perceive as humans being a lot, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a noticeable difference in jumping in a vehicle. That's got a two and a half inch lift versus stock. It is a noticeable difference jumping in a vehicle that has four and four and a half inches of lift over two and a half inches. Mm -hmm. So I think that is an outstanding idea. I think it is an outstanding idea for the use of the technology. Um, And and why not use an outstanding company like Acura? I mean, Acura has even gotten into the deal now where they're actually going to make the airbags for a lot of other companies Mm -hmm. that are into kind of, you know, airbags is where it's going, guys. Like there's airbags on my truck. You want a tow? You need airbags. Yeah. Um, so I think having an airbag suspension that is adjustable is just kind of, you know, any lift up in New York has been around for a long time. That's a very, any level there. That's a very high end company. Um, these aren't cheap systems. These are high end products. These are well-built products, um, that used in the right situation can be extremely beneficial to a driver and or an owner. So I think, especially in that situation, I think that's a great idea. Um, it is a little more expensive, but I mean, that's to be expected, right? Um, but there's a ton of benefits from airbags. Right. And any Again, anything I, that you look at when you start looking into um, paraplegic, quadriplegic, any kind of disabled, and I hate to use that word, but any kind of system that you're using to navigate a normal functioning vehicle and trying to adapt it to something that your life is totally different and a whole different set of circumstances, it's going to be expensive. You're looking at hand throttles. You're looking at things. Like I said, he's yep. paralyzed from the waist down. But the secondary thought that I had was how freaking cool is it that we have something like this available so that my buddy who's been into Jeeps as long as I've known him doesn't have to give up that passion and aspect of life. Uh, yep. He's willing to work around it and willing to try to find a product that works for that. And I mean, from the videos that I've seen, because after that question, I was like, I've got to go check this out and look it up. And uh, there are several videos of of high speed runs, low speed rock crawling, the flexes there. Like it was it blew my mind how well these things worked. <clears throat> so uh, I agree with you. I would love to see it um, try out. And my only caveat to that is, uh, Jason, please uh, come to an outlaw location and uh, let us install it there. And so we can make sure it's done right and make sure you are completely set up and ready to go. Uh Cause I don't want to, I don't want to see him stranded on the trail from a bad install from a, un, you know, not a trustworthy company. So let us install well, Jason. Uh, I'll t- tell Jason this. Do you talk to Jason normally? He's, he's like, is this every, a guy you talk to every day? Yeah. He's a great dude. Okay. So I would tell Jason then keep, stay tuned to dirt to dust. I will get Jamie from AccuAir on the show. We will interview Jamie from AccuAir. We will talk about air suspension. Uh, we will get way more in depth than this. So yeah, be on the lookout for that, that. Jason. In the next month, month, one to two months, I will get, I will reach out to Jamie, Jamie Carr at AccuAir. I will get in touch with him. We will get him on the show and we will talk all things air because just talking about this question now, I can clearly see that we can go, we can go a lot more in depth on oh, this. Yeah. So we can have um, a good conversation. About I, I, let, I will tell Jason right now, we will get Jamie on the show. We will talk air suspension. We will talk air suspension in general. And then more specifically about AccuAir, because I think AccuAir would have a solution for what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. I think that's an outstanding, outstanding use of the technology. And I think there's also just a ton of other uses for it. And I think we could absolutely be well served by having an episode about that. So I would just say, Jason, outstanding idea, outstanding question. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about this a lot more. Now, uh, quickly, because he had a second part of that question, and uh, he asked if that would require a custom drive shaft. So drive shafts, they already have slips in them anyway. So I think I, I would absolutely recommend replacing them. Yes, I would. 
Um, and and I am a huge fan, obviously, of Adams. So I would I would reach out to Adams or you know to your Adams authorized installer, you know, Outlaw Off Road, so that we can make sure that we tell Adams, hey, this is the application we're putting this in, so they make sure to build it the right way. But yes, because you can go from absolutely stock level all the way up to several inches above that. Yeah, I would absolutely change the drive shafts, uh, especially if you're going to wheel it. Um, that's just a good idea, especially on the front side. So Probably yeah, I would absolutely like double carden. <clears throat> and I know Adams can do this. I don't know if other companies can do absolutely. this, but I know Adams can build a drive shaft with some extra spline and slip built into it. For sure, I think 100%. they call that their long travel yep. drive shaft. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. So I would definitely look into that. Um, absolutely, hundred <clears> percent. <throat> Awesome. So Jason, I hope that answers your question, man. Uh, thank you for sending that in. Cause that was a phenomenal question. And I, I really, yeah, really love having that one. Uh, the next one came in and actually was a comment on, um, one of our other mailbag episodes. Um, we, uh, answered a question about a gladiator Mojave, uh, drive shaft. Um, just a very basic rundown question, but he had something a little bit more in depth. So I'm going to get into this one as well. It says I have a 2020 right, have Jeep gladiator currently running a three inch rock crawler adventure X lift. 40 inch tall tires. I've been looking at upgrading my drive shafts as the rubber boots on them have started to tear up and the more offering that I've been doing lately. Is there an advantage or disadvantage to replacing the rear drive shaft with going a one piece or two piece like Mopar offers as an upgrade? I mean, you really want my personal opinion on this. It doesn't matter. Like I, I it just doesn't matter. Like I get the argument about the two piece and the, I do, I, I definitely get that. And there is an argument to be made for that at high lift heights. The problem here is I am just opposed to stupid high lift heights. Like I don't, I don't understand these people with six inches plus on a gladiator, or I just don't understand it, especially on the JLJT platform, because like, what tire are you trying to run, dude? Like you're messing with your center of gravity. You're making your roll. So you're, you're messing with your roll centers. You're making it, you know, you're, you're, you're actively making it ha easier for you to roll the vehicle. So I just don't, it's not that I'm opposed to two piece drive shafts. I'm opposed to putting in the Jeep in this position where that would actually be helpful. Um, could it be a thing? You know, the main thing that I've heard is that it reduces possible vibrations in the drive line. Okay. I, I can get with that, but I would also say that you can mitigate that with proper lift install and proper thrust angle adjustment in the back and proper geometry so if you didn't have a kit that had all the arms, could you mitigate that with a double, you know, like a two-piece drive shaft? Yeah, you could do that. So there's a place for it. I think there's a place for it. I don't think I would go so far as to say one is better than the other. Um, I think if you if you have the adjustability on the axle from arms, do it that way, and then the drive shaft doesn't matter. If you don't have that adjustability, then I could make the argument to have the two-piece drive shaft. And we're talking about a JT here, JL, that doesn't matter. That's not yeah. a thing. Um, and so I could absolutely see that. I mean, clearly he's running forties with three inches of lift. And even if you went up to, um, mm. like the four and a half inch rock crawler springs, which I think is the tallest that rock crawler now offers for the gladiator, um, to get a little bit extra clearance, I still think the one piece would be fine. Um, and something yeah. else to think about when you have a two piece drive shaft, you're introducing another link to break and you're introducing a weak point into that drive shaft. Um, and on forties, I think simple is better. I want to eliminate as many links as possible to break. Um, and especially if he decides to go up to a bigger tire than forties, um, like many people do, especially on a gladiator, cause it's so easy to run a big tire on a gladiator. Yeah. Yep, um, yep. yeah, I think I'm with you one piece all the way, make it simple. Uh, don't go up to a six inch lift. <laughs> yeah. I just don't get that. And you know, on some lift kits, like it would be not possible to run, you know, there's certain lift kits and certain setups. You can't run a two piece drive shaft cause right. stuff's there, right? There's stuff's above way. that drive shaft. And even if you don't have that, typically a two-piece drive shaft is going to have a carrier bearing in the middle. And that's what's going to be the attachment point um, to the vehicle. So if you're moving now that flex point back 18 to 24 inches, mm -hmm. now you're increasing the angle when you droop the rear axle because you've moved the you've moved the actual flex point back. So I'm not a fan of that for geometry if you're going to wheel it. Now, if you're on the road all the time and you want road comfort, you want to, you know, eliminate any possibility of drive line vibration, all that, sure, I can see the argument. Um, but I just, I just think that you're, I think you're solving a problem. You're creating a solution for a problem that really doesn't exist other than in a very, very narrow set of circumstances. So if you're in those narrow set of circumstances, two piece it all day. If you're not, uh, do whatever you want. Yeah, it's not absolutely. gonna, I, and I would actually, I'm with you. I would actually recommend the one piece. 
I did it in the Gladiator, I, and it was him. He swapped and did all that, yeah. and it was One Piece. It was Zero fine. Um, yeah. And obviously, I know we we really do like Adams. Uh, we like the Warring Team. We like dealing For with sure. those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a big difference between Adams and maybe like some of the local? Like, well, we'll say Adams, Tom Woods. Um, I'm trying to think of other big drive shaft companies, and then like the more oh, there's local one guys. here in ta- yeah, Oliver's Carolina Drive Shaft. We yeah. got some local here. Yeah. Um, um, that I've run across numerous times. Is there a big difference? I've gotten this question before. Between the two or or is this it? You kind uh, of pick your poison and go for it. Is there a difference in the product you're going to get? Probably not. Um, emphasis on the probably. Mm-hmm. Um, companies as big as Adams, as big as J.E. Real, as big as Tom Woods, you know, they put out thousands of drive shafts a year. They have their processes down to a science. Now, that is not saying that your local drive shaft company does not. I'm just saying there's an immediate trust factor there when you get with one of the big boys. Generally, the big boys are going to have the newer equipment. They they are they they the argument could be made that they are more likely to have a nicely balanced drive shaft. Mm-hmm. But again, pretty much anybody that works at a local drive shaft company is going to tell me that I'm wrong. So, you know, are you going to get different product? Probably not. Here's why I like having a bigger company. When you travel, when you wheel, it is nice to have that availability of somebody who is used to dealing on a macro scale. They are used to dealing nationwide. They have a network of installers. They have a network of dealers. There's product in stock. There's things that can that are there in place to help you if you have a problem because any part can break. Any part that goes in a vehicle is a consumable, no matter what. You know, like There's very few parts you're going to put on a vehicle, and it's like, all right, set it, forget it, done forever. It's like it's just not a thing. You know, it doesn't work with armor. It doesn't work with suspension. It doesn't work with shocks. It doesn't work with drive shafts. So I think having that availability, if you travel, I think is actually good. Now, on the flip side of that, if you are a buy local and nothing else, and you never leave your area, and you know the guys at the drive shaft, I, I can absolutely see the argument being made for that. Because at the end of the day, these guys are using Spicer and the Apco. Yeah. They're all using pretty much the same stuff, as long as they are using that stuff, right? If you go into their shop and you see something with, you know, Hansen, but okay, probably don't use that drive shaft shop. But if they're using Spicer and the Apco parts and you see they've got a nice, you know, drive shaft machine and their welds, you go in there and you look at their welds and they're good on the on the tubes and all that. And they answer questions about, you know, th- wall thickness on their drive shafts and all that. And they answer all those questions well, then I could absolutely see being local. We have local drive shaft companies here. The only reason we don't use them is because they are local. They don't have dealers. Right. They don't they don't sign up dealers to sell their product. They sell their product direct. So that's really the only reason you don't see me not selling other brands too. like I can't sell you an Oliver or Carolina drive shaft, even though they're right down the road. They don't do dealers. So if you wanted to go down there and do that, they could absolutely do that. I could have one made. It's just not dealer friendly. They don't do dealers. So it's very it's very easy for us, especially these days. You know, I can call Adams. I can put your lift in and do your drive shaft because you need to do a drive shaft after the lift installed. Anyway, you need to do it at actual ride height after it's done. I could call, you know, Dan or Steve or James at Adams and be like, Hey guys, this is what I'm working with. I need this. That thing is shipping tomorrow. Yeah. Like, nine times out of 10. Next business you, day. Mm-hmm. It's coming. If it's a normal right? application it, set up without, it's on the crazy, way. It's, it's yeah. on the way. And you could, I've, I think, I think Josh actually had to do this. Uh, Josh, the owner of Charlotte, uh, got uh gotten a little bit of a bind in Pritchett Canyon last year. I think it was a Carolina drive mm-hmm. shafts that he uh, Carolina drive lines it twisted pretty yep. bad. Yep. 700 horsepower. We'll do that. <clears throat> it, it, and I think can. as soon as he it had can. service, he called Adams and the next morning there was a <laughs> freaking, cause they're not in Las Vegas. They're not too far from him. Yep. Uh, the next, no, no, the next no, morning no. there was a drive shaft at the rental house waiting for him. Uh, yep. That's, that's pretty phenomenal customer service. I got to say. That. And I've experienced that service with them numerous times. Mm-hmm. I and mean, they're part of the race team. And and they have took they have taken care of me on more than one occasion, even way before the race team. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have, you know, they were on Reaper going back to 2018. Mm-hmm. So I've had a lot of experience with them. I mean, we sold hundreds and hundreds of their drive shafts, and we continue to do so. Yeah, and I'll, um, I'll there's do not a, really a, a week that goes by plug for them too. Um, obviously, I'm building the LJ, and the LJ needs some pretty badass parts. Um, I had no idea what direction to go to. Doing junkyard tons, you've got a flange mount where you can switch to a yoke and then you don't know the sizes. And like, it was just because it wasn't a standard U joint that fit in either side of those axles. Um, And then trying to tee those off to a factory transfer case is also a, um, it's kind of a nightmare, but I called Adams. I was like, Hey, here's what I'm dealing with here. The parts that I'm using. Here's, here's my driveline setup. And they're like, Oh yeah, we can do that. We'll have it done in like two days. I'm like, 
wait, what? <laughs> and yeah. they're like, uh, we're going to suggest you change this to a yoke. You're going to use this on this size and you're going to, you need this SYE kit and this is going to switch it to a 30 spline instead of 27 spline, which is normal. And here you go. Literally front to back um, within a 10 minute conversation, they knew exactly what I needed. Uh, and all I had to do is go out and measure on the Jeep and tell them the length I need. And they had everything yep. else notated down. And so, yeah, that's, that's a level of service that I haven't experienced anywhere else. And like I said, the local guys might be able to do the exact same thing, but to have someone that has that much experience, even with a junkyard ton swap on an LJ, um, they've seen it all. Phenomenal. They see it all. Yeah. They, they've um, seen it all. They know. And, and it's not just thing. Adams. Like we plug Adams cause we know them and we deal with them. Mm-hmm. And I know James and I know Dan and I know Steve, I've been to their facility um, in Vegas. I've toured it. You know, James has taken me around and, and walked me around the shop. Like, I've seen their office. I've used their bathroom. I've drank from their water fountain. Like <laughs> stole their and, coffee. <laughs> and, and watch them. It wasn't stolen. He offered it. Okay. I've watched them work on local customers' vehicles. You know, they're in there re-gearing and doing axles and drive shafts and stuff on local, like Vegas regulars. You know, they're not just drive shafts. They're doing gears and drive line stuff right there in their shop. So not only are they making the product, they're able to, again, we're hitting back on R&D. They're able to R&D some stuff. They're able to look at this stuff every single day of the week. And I think that's, you know, that's unique. It's kind of like what Northridge used to be when they had the, you know, they had the the big website, but they also had the shops. And they still have one or two shops, whatever. But that's a unique combination, you know. And and I'm a fan of being, you know, a dual threat or a triple threat when it comes to that kind of stuff. So, you know, other companies are great, too. I mean, no, nothing against Tom Woods. I've heard nothing but great things. Nothing against J.E. Real. Nothing but great things. My personal experience is with Adams and those guys. And from that experience, I, I've never needed to go anywhere else. Um, and that's a testament. That's a testament to their product and it's a testament yeah, to their service. Absolutely. So, Well, those were the two questions that I had, Doug. Um, I think I may, uh, I don't want to overdo it, but I may pull the group again in a couple of weeks and uh, see if anyone watched, you know, just kind of follow up and see if they've watched a couple episodes here. Jason, like Matt, I hope you're ones. watching the episodes. Hope your answers got questions. Questions got answered. I got that backwards. Hope your questions got answered. Um, really looking forward to doing an episode with AccuAir. So let's absolutely get on that. Doug, I'm 100 make that happen. That's all I got for this weekend, man. <laughs> Enjoy your Friday. Uh, like this comment or like this video if you if you haven't already. Subscribe. Uh, leave us a five star rating on both Apple or Spotify, whatever your listening platform of choice is. If you're more of a visual person, this is obviously going up on YouTube. So uh, drop a comment. Always, 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 whether it's social media, <clears throat> YouTube, anything, uh, even on Spotify, there's a, a little questionnaire um, where you can ask us questions as well. So please feel free to ask us questions. Uh, we would love to respond to you and get an answer out and uh, continue doing Friday mailbag episodes. Doug? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Spotify being that recent addition that we've just added. We've only added that here in the last week or two. Yeah. I'm pretty excited to be on there, but now you can get us on, obviously you can still get us on Apple podcasts. We've been on there since day one, obviously YouTube. If you're watching this right now, you're watching on YouTube. Um, We've now added, I think Google, correct? Google play, right? Um, And Spotify, as Caleb just said. And we also have now the three most recent episodes. You can always stay up to date. Three most recent episodes at the outlaw offroads website at the outlaw offroad.com. You can click, click on there, click the podcast, you can go listen to the three most recent episodes there. So doing everything we can to meet you guys where you're at, make it convenient for you to listen to us wherever you are, whenever you are, whatever you may be doing. So we appreciate each and every one of you. As always, remember to like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Keep it going so we can keep it going. We appreciate each and every single one of you. But with that, we are going to peace out of here. Another Friday mailbag in the books. We will see you guys next Wednesday for another episode of Dirt to Dust. See you guys later. Have a great weekend, everybody. You've been listening to Dirt to Dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime... To see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.